This is one of multiple videos where I'm showing you how to hack networks using Kali Linux. In previous videos, I showed you how to download and install Kali Linux on a Windows 10 computer using a pre-built image that you can download from Kali.org. I also showed you how you can hack Cisco networks when a switch is badly or poorly configured. It's important that you configure networks properly, otherwise it's very easy to hack networks such as Cisco networks using Kali Linux. In this video, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to break networks that are badly configured. We're gonna use two protocols. The first one, Dynamic Trunking Protocol or DTP, and the second one, the VTP or VLAN Trunking Protocol. We're basically going to do things to the network by leveraging those two protocols. I'm gonna show you as an example how you can take devices off the network by sending VTP packets to a Cisco switch using Kali Linux. So we basically going to delete VLANs from a switch by simply injecting VTP packets into the network. Kali Linux in our example will be configured on one VLAN, we'll have hosts on a separate VLAN, but that's not gonna stop us. We're going to use DTP to form a trunk with a Cisco switch, have visibility of a separate VLAN. So Kali Linux will be in one VLAN, let's say VLAN one, our hosts will be in a separate VLAN, let's say VLAN 2. We'll send DTP packets to the switch so that we have visibility of those hosts from our Kali Linux host. And then what we'll do is use VTP to delete VLANs automatically on a Cisco switch, basically removing devices in one VLAN from the network. Now before we get started, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video if you enjoy it, and please click on the bell to get notifications when I post a new video. All right, without further ado, let me show you how to hack Cisco networks. At the moment, on the switch, show interface trunk shows us that there are no trunk ports on the switch. Show interface gigabit 01, switch port, shows us that this port, there's the command again, this port is configured to use DTP, but at the moment, it's a static access port. Administrative mode is dynamic order. Bad idea to use DTP. Show run interface gigabit 01 shows us that this port is configured with a default configuration. That's a bad idea. Because what we can do is launch a DTP attack and enable trunking by simply selecting that option and clicking OK. Yersinia sees that there's a switch using access auto, which is what we saw over here, dynamic auto. But in the output of the switch, we can see that the interface went down and came up again. Gigabit 01 went down. Now gigabit 01 has come up. And if we use the same command again, show interface trunk, Notice trunking is now enabled on gigabit 01. So gigabit 01 is using 802.1Q. The VLAN 1 interface on the switch or the SVI or switched virtual interface came up because we have an interface in that VLAN. But again, show interface trunk. Native VLAN is VLAN 1 on this port, but trunking is now used using 802.1Q modus auto VLANs one and two are allowed across that trunk. That means that Kali Linux will have visibility of the PC in VLAN two. Show run interface gigabit zero one. No configuration on that port, but the MacBook is in VLAN two. Notice it's been configured in VLAN two. And if we type show interface gigabit zero two switch port, we can see through this command that that port gigabit 02 is configured in VLAN 2. It's currently acting as an access port. Again, Kali Linux, which is supposedly in VLAN 1, will be able to see traffic sent by devices in VLAN 2. Before we look at that, let's have a look at spanning tree again. So show spanning tree. For VLAN 1, the switch is no longer the root. It has a cost of four to get to the root switch. 
Gigabit 01 is its root port to get to the root switch. For VLAN 2, it's the root. Notice Gigabit 01 and 02 are now designated ports. Previously, we only saw Gigabit 02 in the output there. So back in Kali Linux, let's start Wireshark. Select Capture, Start. You can see that we are capturing a bunch of traffic on the network, including spanning tree. Bunch of other traffic seen here. But let's filter for DHCP. On the MacBook, currently has this IP address. I'm going to disable the Ethernet interface on the MacBook. I'll enable it again so that it sends a DHCP request. Notice Kali Linux is seeing the DHCP information. So it's seeing the DHCP discover message, seeing the DHCP offer from the switch to that host. It sees the DHCP request and sees the DHCP acknowledgement. This is on VLAN 2. Notice the IP address 10.1.2.254 giving this IP address to the MacBook. So the MacBook has been given IP address 10122 and Kali Linux, which is supposedly in a different VLAN, was able to see that. On the MacBook, if I ping a non-existent IP address, so ping 10.1.2.1.2.3, I'll press enter on the MacBook and filter for ARP. Notice we can see ARP resolution protocol. Sender IP address is this looking for the MAC address of 10.1.2.1.2.3. Basically, the Kali Linux host, which is supposedly in VLAN 1, can now see the traffic in VLAN 2. Now, that's a broadcast. If the host sent multicast traffic to, let's say, 239.1.2.3, the Kali Linux host would see that ICMP traffic. So here we go. We can see IP address 10122 pinging 239.123. This is multicast traffic. I'll stop that ping. Now this is not doing much here. I'll show you in a subsequent video how I can, for instance, sniff OSPF passwords. OSPF, which is a routing protocol, sends updates into the network using multicast and Kali Linux will be able to sniff those writing updates and capture passwords as an example on the OSPF updates. So what we've seen thus far is a CDP attack. I've shown you a DTP attack, and I've shown you spanning tree. Let's have a look at VTP. VTP is a really bad protocol. Generally, you want to turn it off. It's actually been removed from the Cisco CCNA exam. So in the next release of CCNA, it won't be there. If I type show VTP status, the switch is in this domain called home. It's currently acting as a server. Configuration revision number is one. It has six VLANs configured. Show VLAN brief as an example. Shows me that VLAN one and VLAN two exist on the switch. If I create another VLAN, let's say VLAN 3, show VLAN brief, VLAN 3 has been created, show VTP status. Configuration revision number is now 2. So in Kali Linux, let's send a VTP packet. You can see it's learnt about the home VTP domain. So I'm going to launch an attack and let's delete a VLAN. Now, before I do that, I'm going to plug in my MacBook. So this MacBook is now plugged into the network on port three. So on the switch, we can see that gigabit 03 came up. So show IP interface brief, gigabit 01, two and three are now up. I'll configure gigabit 03 as an access port. 
and put it into VLAN 2. So show run. These two ports are now in the same VLAN. On this MacBook, I'm going to enable DHCP. It should get an IP address in VLAN 2. And there you go, 10123. So on that MacBook over there, the small one, ping 10123, ping succeeds. So again, that MacBook can ping this MacBook. They are both in VLAN 2. But what I'll do now on Kali Linux is delete a VLAN. And the VLAN I'm going to delete is VLAN 2. So on the switch, show VTP status. At the moment, configuration revision number is still 2. Show VLAN brief. We still have those VLANs. I've seen sometimes that this doesn't work that well. But notice here, VLAN 2 has now been removed. I've noticed sometimes you have to create a VLAN to speed this up. But if I type show VLAN brief, VLAN 2 is missing, and that MacBook can no longer ping this MacBook. I've basically removed these two devices from the network. Again, show interface gigabit 02 switch port. Gigabit 02. The interface that that MacBook is connected to is configured in VLAN 2, but the VLAN is inactive. So basically, I've removed these devices from the network. If I have a look at Gigabit 03, that's the port that this MacBook is connected to. It's also in VLAN 2. So this command shows us that Gigabit 03 is configured in VLAN 2, but it's inactive. I've removed the device from the network, essentially. So if I create VLAN 2 again, so show VLAN brief, I've now got VLAN 2 back on the switch. The pings should start succeeding once things converge, and there you go, the pings are now succeeding. Interface VLAN 2 has also come up on the switch. So that MacBook can now ping this MacBook. But again, I can simply delete that VLAN using Kali Linux. Show VLAN brief shows us that the VLAN exists. To speed things up, I could simply create another VLAN. So let's create VLAN 5. Type exit. And as soon as I did that, the ping started failing on the MacBook because things converge quicker when you actually do something on the switch, like create a VLAN. Otherwise, you just need to wait a while for for that VLAN to be removed. So show VLAN brief. VLAN 5 is there, but VLAN 2 is gone. And if you want to really be nasty, you could simply say, delete all VTP VLANs. So at the moment, we've got VLAN 1, 3, and 5. One will not be deleted because it's a default VLAN. These other VLANs will also not be deleted, but 3 and 5 should disappear when this converges. To speed it up, I'll create VLAN 10 and type end. So show VLAN brief. Notice all the VLANs have gone. VLAN 3, 5, 2, 10 are all gone. That can basically break an entire network if you're using VTP. So don't use VTP or set your devices to transparent. So either disable VTP or use transparent. Don't use server or client mode. VTP is a bad idea. Now there's some basic examples of how you can hack networks using Kali Linux. Make sure that you understand how your protocols work in your network and how you can secure your network. In other videos, I'll show you how you can protect your network from these kind of hacks. But in this video, I wanted to show you what's possible using Kali Linux. I've been